Hello, and welcome everyone to Epileptic Disorders Roadmap to EEGs. My name is Erfan Sheikh, and in this module, we will talk about EEG artifacts. Artifacts on EEG are important to recognize as misinterpretation of otherwise physiologically normal or non-physiologically normal findings may lead to overcalling, overreading of an EEG. Here we will talk about some of the most common artifacts that you may encounter in your daily reads. Briefly, physiologic sources of artifacts are apparent on every EEG recording and are generated from biological properties of the patient and the many sources within the body. The first artifact we will talk about is sweat artifact. Scalp perspiration will produce artifact by creating an unwanted electrical connection between electrodes. Sweat artifact appears as a very low frequency, usually less than 0.5 Hz, low amplitude with undulating waves. Sweat artifacts are usually seen in multiple adjacent channels or over the entire scalp and poses a risk for bridging between electrodes. Some techniques that can be used to eliminate this artifact are increasing the low frequency filter, drying the scalp and reapplying the electrodes, or cooling the patient with the fan. And this bipolar montage EEG you can see specifically in the T602 channels as well as the P301 channels and throughout the recording outlined in red circles are undulating slow low amplitude waveforms consistent with sweat artifact. Looking at the average montage outlined in the red circle you can see low amplitude undulating 0.5 to 1 hertz waveforms consistent with sweat artifact. The heart is another key source of EEG artifact and is variably present on recordings depending on the montage that is used and the size of the patient. Referential montages often accentuate EKG artifact. Overweight patients with short stocky necks as well as babies may be predisposed to EKG artifact because the dipole is situated close to the recording electrodes and is better able to transmit the current. Recording the EKG during routine EEG is essential to enable recognition of the cardiac cerebral relationship. EKG interference may be noted as a small spike that, in isolation, may mimic an interictal spike or, in succession and on low amplitude recording, may mimic lateralized periodic discharges or generalized periodic discharges. EKG can be readily identified as a source because of the regularity and time-locked waves synchronous with the EKG. This bipolar montage above shows a patient with a complex cardiovascular condition and an abnormal heart rhythm. Note the synchronization of each EKG spike that is time-locked with the EEG spike outlined in red. EKG artifact is an important artifact to recognize and can be easily eliminated by replacing or repositioning the EKG lead or by using a non-cephalic reference. Again, on average montage, EKG artifact is made more apparent with each QRS complex coinciding with the scalp EEG spike. Eye blink artifact is a very common artifact seen in awake EEGs. In the second second of the page, you can see prominent downward deflections in the frontal FP1 and FP2 channels, which is consistent with eye blink artifact. As you may be aware, the cornea is positively charged, and when you blink, the eyes roll back and the positive dipole gets picked up by the FP1 and FP2 channels, giving it a downward deflection on the page. This is also known as the Bell's phenomenon, where the eyes roll upward during eye blink and closure. This diagram on the bottom left hand of the page is representative of the Bell's phenomenon and eye blinks on EEG. This is an average montage showing eye blinks. As you can see clearly from the FP1 and FP2 channels, there is a downward deflection on EEG representative of eye blink artifact. Another important artifact to recognize a horizontal lateral eye movement artifact. This is noted in the frontal eyelids with the eyes moving horizontally and slowly. This is best noted in the FP1, F7, and F7, T3 on the left chains, and FP2, F8, and F8, T4 on the right chains. Another feature of eye roving movements noted on this page is shown below in the lock rock channels circled below in the red. Lock rock stands for left outer canthus and right outer canthus, where the undulating waveforms noted on the lock rock channels coincide with the horizontal lateral eye roving movements noted in this page. Again, shown in average montage and most notably in the lateral frontal chains F7 and F8, 
the lateral eye movements which can also be seen in the lock rock eye lead channels below where the slow undulating waveforms representing eye movements. In this bipolar montage, we will look at eye flutter artifact. Specifically note the rhythmic 2 to 3 hertz oscillations with the restricted field to FP1 and FP2 fitting the distribution of eye movements on EEG. Additionally, note the 8 hertz PDR suggesting wakefulness in this patient outlined by the red circle and the star. Another important way to confirm this artifact is by taking a look at the video and looking for eye fluttering movements on the patient. This is an average montage looking at eye flutter artifact, as noted in the FP1 and FP2 channels with rhythmic 2 to 3 hertz oscillations. Although these may appear pathologic, noting their distribution to be mainly over the FP1 and FP2 regions and without a particular field, the reader can quickly identify these to be artifactual. In this montage, we will take a look at glossokinetic artifact. The tongue is a large muscle and located centrally within the head. The tongue, similar to the eye, creates a bioelectric dipole with the tip of the tongue negative relative to the root. During oropharyngeal motion, a direct current potential is produced that is often diffusely seen with frontal and temporal predominance. This artifact is produced during tongue movements such as swallowing or speaking. In this bipolar montage, glossokinetic artifact can be seen in the center of the page. During this routine EEG, the patient was noted to be singing. Note the high amplitude frontally and temporally dominant slow waves produced by the tongue's upper movement. This is differentiated from other forms of delta slowing by the predominant muscle artifact noted by the high frequency activity overlying the slow waves. Again, in average montage, note the high frequency muscle activity in conjunction with the waveforms. Validation of glossokinetic artifact can be made possible through application of tongue movement monitors with electrodes placed above and below the mouth, over the chin, and cheek. Secretion artifact occurs as a result of secretions, fluid movement in the upper respiratory tract. From this bipolar montage, you can see the extremely regular periodicity of this activity, which would fit with respiratory rate ventilatory settings usually. In this case, 4 per 15 seconds, so a respiratory rate of 16 per minute. Muscle artifact is another commonly observed artifact on EEG. It is high frequency activity, noted to be very spiky, but too fast to be an epileptic discharge. It is commonly noted during the awake state and may obscure critical portions of the recording, such as the EEG bipolar montage shown here, where there is obscuration of the right hemispheric leads as circled in the red. The frontalis and temporis muscles are the principal site of myogenic artifact. Frontalis muscles become most involved with forced eye closure and photic stimulation. Temporalis muscles may become active with jaw clenching, chewing, bruxisms, appearing as bursts of fast activity. In the average montage, you can see high frequency muscle artifact obscuring the EEG on the right hemispheric chains. Padding an infant can produce a non-physiological normal artifact. This is called padding artifact. In this bipolar montage, e.g., note the rhythmic delta activity over the left occipital region and the right frontotemporal chains that shifts in the second half of the page. This is induced by movement of the electrode wires. A similar pattern can be observed with chest percussion therapy. Similar rhythmic or repetitive artifact can also be produced by electrode wire or patient movement from ventilators, percussive anti-bed sore beds, intra-aortic balloon pumps, and oscillatory ventilators. The shape of the artifact depends on the frequency of activation of the device and is usually a slow wave or mixture of frequencies superimposed on a slow wave and is typically stereotyped or monomorphic. Location of this type of artifact depends on the location of the padding and position of the, ba of the baby. When in doubt, look at the video to confirm when the video is available. This is the same artifact shown in average montage. Note the rhythmic nature that coincides with padding as the leads are being moved alongside the patient, as best appreciated in the O1 and right temporal and right occipital regions. To wrap up, in this module, we have covered the most common EEG artifacts that you are most likely to encounter on your daily EEG reads.